Alrighty, we are going to try to get through Galatians 3 today. This is my third attempt for various reasons. So let's see if we can make it through successfully. Uh, this is a letter of that Paul uh, wrote to these people. All right, you, f you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you before your very eyes? Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to le learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Have you experienced so much in vain if it really was in vain? So again, I ask, does God give you his Spirit and work miracles among you? by the works of the law or by your believing in what you heard. So also Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. To my understanding, which could be wrong, is that the new believers, the Christians, the new Christians, the Gentiles had faith and they um, we're having the signs and the wonders and the miracles and all the good things are happening like you know post holy spirit and then the people who were like <sighs> the jewish people um wanted these people to have the faith um in jesus and then also the law which is like all the rules it's like the old, it's like the Ten Commandments and like all the Old Testament, like 600 some like rules for the people to follow back in the day. Um, and Paul is coming in and telling them, no, it's faith alone in Christ alone, not all the rules. You don't have to deal with all these rules. And he's getting frustrated with them. Okay. Uh, understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announced the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse as it is written, Cursed is anyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law, right? Because this is like 600 some rules and no one can follow that. No one can do all of the law correctly. They're cursed if you're even going to bother trying. Like it's just, it's too much, right? Um, clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says, the person who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole, right? So he's talking about Jesus crucified on the cross right there. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So no one could, uh, back in the day, right, Old Covenant, they had all the laws and no one could keep up with all the laws and they had all the sin and then they would offer like these sacrifices and um, they didn't have like a direct uh, communication with God right they had to go to these priests and then or something like that i don't know I always double check fact check what i say <laughs> moving forward and then jesus came and um like was the sacrifice um and then where was i going so then that's the new covenant and then so the people now it's just all you need is the faith in jesus and um, you don't need all that old law anymore. Okay, let's move forward. The law and the promise. Brothers and sisters, let me take an example from everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or add 
to a human covenant that has been duly established, so it is in this case. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people, but and to your seed, meaning one person, who is Christ. What I mean is this. Oh my goodness. Let's keep going. What I mean is this. The law introduced 430 years later does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the promise. For if the inheritance depends on the law, then it no longer depends on the promise. But God in his grace gave it to Abraham through a promise. So in essence, God promised Abraham the new covenant through his seed jesus on the cross and in the meantime they had the old covenant something like that about the 430 years i don't know let's move forward why then <laughs> why then was the law given at all it was added because of transgressions until the seed which is jesus to whom the promise referred had come the law was given through angels and entrusted to a mediator a mediator however implies more than one party but god is one is the law therefore opposed to the promises of god absolutely not for if a law had been given that could impart life then righteousness would certainly have come by the law but scripture has locked up everything under the control of sin so that what was promised being given through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. So he's not saying the old covenant was bad, like the law at the time. It kept the people in check, kept them close to God, kept them offering their sacrifices, you know, kept them focused on trying to do what's right, even though they're failing all the time and um, reminded them of their sin, you know, so they could just try to like, whatever be good law followers apparently <laughs> children of god um before the coming of this faith we were held in custody under the law locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed so the law was our guardian until christ came that we might be justified by faith now that this faith has come We are no longer under a guardian, like no longer under the law. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ, right? That's what they mean. You're like in Christ. You're in the body of Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So it's not so much that we're all Abraham's seeds, right? Jesus was the seed and then we're in Jesus. We're in Christ, so we're also then the seed in that way. So it's a slight like twist, sort of. Uh, I better stop there. <laughs> My commentary, uh, in case I'm wrong about any of this. But um, so it's a kind of a complicated one. I'm really not the best person to explain it. I am like a Gentile, so I don't know a lot about the law. I don't know a lot about the Old Covenant. I don't know about all the things, so I can't even articulate it in this video. And I don't need to know because all I need to have is my faith. I have my faith, right? So, um, so that's that. <laughs> have an awesome day.